Hey, Brass Fags here. Night Vision is a perpetual cycle of this is the last thing I'll ever buy, followed by you buying the most expensive thing you've ever bought outside of a car or a house. In fact, the only upside of Night Vision is that it permanently Overton windows you into thinking most firearms gear is actually relatively cheap, which it isn't. A significant portion of that spending is attempting to outfit all of your nicely daytime configured rifles that you've spent years perfecting to now work in the dark. Because sadly, all optics suck in the dark and laser aiming modules are cool. So upon diving into this laser aiming module market, you'll realize the mantra of buy once, cry once sounds a lot more like buy several times, still continue to cry. As basically all lasers, even the expensive ones, kind of suck. So while you might be okay shelling out for your main rifle, maybe your second rifle or third rifle, it starts to get real old when you have to equip these things with, functionally speaking, minimum thousand dollar laser aiming units to just shoot in the dark. Which you've now convinced yourself is mandatory because you own night vision. Hence the topic of today's video, the Somo Gears full power rip off PEC-15 airsoft laser from China. If you're at all into firearms or perhaps common sense, yeah, probably just the first one, you'll quickly move along as that was about as many red flags as you can possibly cram into an eight word sentence. Even when you look at the website, it is self-admittedly for airsoft usage only. However, at some point, someone who probably couldn't afford to shell out $1,700 for an amp PLC decided to try one of these on a real rifle and not only found that it held up, but in a lot of ways is superior to a amp PLC, which is a pretty low bar. So I wanted to see for myself, is this thing a toy or is this something that you could functionally put on a fighting rifle? Or is this something somewhere in between where you can put it on some rifles, but maybe not on your main squeeze? For some people, this sounds ridiculous. It's $300, it's airsoft. There's no way in hell this will work. But blue balling you for a couple seconds regarding the review, I actually tried or kind of prototyped the concept alongside my friend, the guy that films all this stuff, of making a laser aiming module. And realistically speaking, the diodes, the laser emitters, all this stuff, the circuit board, the controller, None of this is actually particularly expensive at all. Uh, most of the trick seems to be getting a unit that holds zero and building a body that is easy to produce and assemble. So actually on paper, this isn't as ridiculous as it sounds. Getting into the unit itself, the Somo Gear distinguished itself over other cheap Chinese knockoff airsoft things by being potted. Potted is the act of filling in the cavities where the circuit board and all that stuff resides with uh, epoxy. This drastically increases reliability as basically all components on board that could have shaken loose, wire connections, board modules, and more are actually physically cemented in place. The controls of this thing are fairly straightforward. It's a PEC-15 clone, so it does PEC-15 things. All the buttons are in the same place and you they do what you expect them to do. However, not only are these switches present, but they're actually fairly tactile and not mushy at all. On top of that, this thing actually has a functioning crane plug. And I was sure to give it a good time by putting the plug in and out, in and out, in and out. And uh, I'm confident we're not gonna get a prolapsed plug situation that seems to be fairly ubiquitous with other units. At the front of the unit, we have the usual three lasers. One visible laser, one IR laser, one diffuse laser that ends up making the illuminator. For those that aren't aware, any laser you buy in the United States presently, be it an A3, an I2, a Hollow Sun, LS321, a PLC, you name it, all of them are neutered by the, of all things, Food and Drug Administration. None of that nonsense here. This thing is straight from a Chinese sweatshop and is basically full power as fuck. Almost on par with a full power laser, about 20 to 30% weaker. You don't generally use the full power on your laser 70% of the time, and even when you do use it, you'll very often find it's kind of too bright, even when the range conditions call for it. But there is a number of scenarios where the mediocrity of civilian lasers really shows, be it on a dark night, targets beyond 100 yards, moonlit nights, very strongly moonlit nights, with targets in the shadow where civilian-powered illuminators struggle to cut through the ambient lighting. Regardless, there are scenarios where full-power lasers absolutely dominate and uh, basically run circles around basic lasers. Moving on to some issues, because we knew it, there were gonna be issues here. First off, the illuminator cannot be focused past a certain point. Now we can focus it all the way and turn it into functionally, you know, two lasers, but diffusing it, you know, opening up the beam can only go so far and it 
can't rotate past the setting that I would typically on other lasers use for about 50 yards and beyond. Furthermore, adjusting the focus level of the illuminator changes the zero of the illuminator, as in the, the unit is actually moving within the housing in a set pattern that moves it around when you change the focus. This isn't something specific to mine. It seems basically all of the ones that were bought in the time period I bought this have this exact issue, as I've talked to multiple people that own these things. Now, funnily enough, because the illuminator is so, relatively speaking, tight, you'll actually never find yourself adjusting the focus because you're gonna leave it on the widest open setting, which once again is super narrow. It sort of rectifies the previous issue. My windage screw for the illuminator is completely jammed. It will not move without stupid amounts of pressure and I'm basically concerned I'm gonna tear the thing off if I you know, use a tool to move it. This occurred roughly at the 1500 round range. The elevation still works just fine, detent, all that stuff works great. One big feature of lasers like this, tri-lasers, is that the visible laser and the IR laser are co-aligned. That means that we could zero the visible laser during the day or dusk setting, and then have already a zeroed IR laser. That is not the case here. These things, while on paper, are listed as co-aligned. They are off by about three to four MOA at 100 yards, and that will grow as you get out to distance you have to zero this thing with the IR laser only. Now you could use the Viz laser to kind of get on target, but once again, they're not perfectly co-aligned, enough so that you're gonna be noticing large misses at even intermediate ranges. Now for the part that you've all been waiting for, did this thing hold zero? Well, I had this thing for about three months for 2,020 rounds. The first 1,200 or so was for the Fixie review I did a while back and that's where I did the majority of night vision shooting. Then I put it on the Jackal, zeroed it, but I didn't really do any night vision shooting. Simply at the end of the review, I checked through my optic and yep, the thing was still zeroed. Then I did one final consecutive three day shoot where we zeroed it with a parallel zero and used it for about 250 rounds and we checked zero before and after and it was good to go. So when I say held zero, I mean held zero. No two MOA wandering bullshit, good enough for government work. I mean, this thing actually stayed dead nuts on. This thing slaps, huh? Well, this is all very subjective. So feel free to tune out now. The facts, the brass facts, are that this thing held up for, you know, 2000 rounds. Now it did have some issues from the factory and some that manifested during the review. But the reality is this thing cost $300 which is five times less than an app PLC, the, the real version of this, while straight up murdering it in performance. I do need to do a video on full power lasers versus civ lasers, but the short of it is the performance gain obviously isn't always needed, but when it is needed, it is irreplaceable. And this $300 unit has that option. The $1,700 app PLC does not. So that's that, huh? Real PEC-15 blown the fuck out by a Chinese PEC-15? Not quite. But also, sort of. For starters, don't buy an App PLC. That thing is a giant piece of shit. You should literally get any other laser on the market as the App PLC is simultaneously the most expensive civilian laser while still being by far the worst performer. But is there a reason to buy the other thousand dollar laser boxes on the market when this thing, albeit with some reliability issues, comes out and basically offers full power for performance at th one third the cost or less? If I may, I'm gonna take a detour. Actually, I, I don't need to ask, you literally cannot stop me. We have to realize this thing is a sample size of one. And not to shoot myself in the foot, but YouTube videos and isolations are generally a pretty mediocre way to judge the quality of a product in aggregate. When I put out a video and say, hey, I think this is good or bad, it's not just my experience all the time. A lot of times I throw in information on how it fits into the market, as well as some research on how other people in the community have dealt with and handled the product. And here's where this video and I fall short. Viewed in isolation, this thing is great. Performance-wise, it beats out products three times the price. And the failures it did experience, while numerous, are not really catastrophic in nature. But unfortunately, there really doesn't seem to be data out there on how this laser performs over a large sample set in regards to their new potted devices. And thus, I can't exactly say where this sits in the paradigm of laser aiming modules. So at the end of this monologue, do you put this on your rifle? Well, that's more so than ever up to the individual to decide. For some people, they'll run these things, no question to ask. For other people, we'll vet it for 500 rounds and then send it. And then others, no, the track record isn't quite there yet. And for something that was probably never designed to be on a rifle in the first place. 
I think all of these are viable answers. Ultimately, it's just a case of risk management. What level of failure are you willing to gamble for with what is functionally a primary aiming device for your weapon in the dark? For me personally, however, that doesn't disqualify the Somo Gear PEC-15 from actually being used with, in conjunction with firearms. Kind of like I alluded to at the start of the video, I never really expected this to replace lasers on your main rifles. Probably like me, most of you have a degenerate amount of AR-15s that all need lasers on them because, once again, you've convinced yourself that shooting in the dark is the only way you want to shoot. So I wouldn't run this on a primary. I wouldn't even run this on a secondary, but maybe put this on my TP9, put this on a tertiary rifle, maybe put on a rifle that I generally don't shoot at night. Well, this represents a cheap way to get those rifles spun up for night vision usage and not even in a unsatisfactory way, right? You're getting full power performance right here, which is you know, pretty fucking based. I still don't understand why the fuck these things are marketed for airsoft kits. Like, maybe it's just me, but this seems asinine that people want full power lasers in a force on force environment and every single one of these is on some dude's airsoft gun with the diffuser caps flipped off because, you know, fuck it, that's what all the JSOC dudes do. The only thing between you and impromptu LASIK is the ability of this dude with his cheap tape switch that's wrapped around his knockoff CAC VFG to not apply 1% more pressure and just blast out a full... Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Um, felt a like this one was sort of a cop-out. Ultimately, I didn't really give you a hard and fast conclusion, just presented some data. But this is one of those cases where it's going to be very user dependent. This, this is absolutely a case of risk management or risk tolerance. Does it make sense to put this on a rifle for you? For some people it's yes, for some people it's hell fucking no. Real quick, the usual YouTube spiel, and I'll throw some dog footage at the end to make it all worth it, but if you enjoyed this type of content and content like this, consider supporting me. I'm trying to make this work as a living, which means I can continue uploading, you know, one video every single week, which I have been for about six months now. But I do need some help from you guys, be it support through Subscribestar, be it by watching videos, liking videos, commenting, you know, the usual YouTube bullshit. So if you'd like to support me in my journey and making this a reality as something I can do for a living to bring you content that you may or may not enjoy, hey, consider doing those things. Regardless, thanks for watching. Here's that footage. <laughs>